Hello to my dear friends and my fellow souls. I'm here today to do a pick a reading message for you. So welcome or welcome back as the wind leads us in. <laughs> I'm very excited to get this started for you. But first, I just want to say hello to anyone who is new to the channel. And again, welcome back to anyone who has been here for a little while. I really appreciate you spending this time with me here today. And if your reading resonates, please feel free to drop a like, drop a comment or subscribe. Uh, it does help the channel grow. It helps it reach more people and it would mean a lot to me. So. To get started on your reading today, for pile number one, our message is going to be, your light can never be lost, only forgotten. For pile number two, a reference to Luna Tarot, ignite your talent to ignite the world. And for number three, every storm feeds beauty somewhere. So you are more than welcome to go ahead and pick one of these. If you would like to pick with crystals, I may decide to pick some of these out. Let's see here. For number one, <clears throat> actually I'll put this on number two because it looks a lot like this one. So this will be for number two. For number one, we can use the smoky quartz. And then as I said, number two will be this little agate bead. And let's see here. I think the sodalite again for number three. So you can either pick a message or a gemstone, and then I will go ahead and see you in your reading in just a moment. Thank you again for listening, and bye bye for now. Hello to my dear friends and my fellow souls in pile number one. If you chose, your light can never be lost, only forgotten. And we will put that off to the side here for you. Then this will be your reading for today. I'm going to start by shuffling out a few cards and then we will lay them all out. And then I will try to get a message for you from them. Or I will successfully get a message for you from them. I'm not that concerned about it. Okay, so for pile number one, spirit, the universe, and the highest good. Definitely that one. A pile number one. Do we have any other cards for pile number one? Okay, this one wants to come out. I should have all the timestamps in the description below if you would like to skip past this phase, but I do like to do my pile preparation on camera if I can because I feel like it helps people get their energies into the reading and feel more aligned with it. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm not really feeling like it. Yes, but I'll take this one off the back that was sliding. Okay. And then we'll pull from the Alistair Crowley Tarot. What messages do you have for pile number one? Not this one, I'm hearing. This one. Okay. And then we've got these four. One of my rings went flying. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so for pile number one again, from these message from the universe cards, or really they're, uh, they're the universe has your back cards, but you can, you can view these as messages from the universe if you would prefer. I did do a messages from the universe uh, um, reading earlier on if you would like to check that out as well. I'm being called to let you know I do have one of those available. It's the first reading that I ever put out. Still building the channel, still doing my best. Thank you so much to anyone who has actually subscribed. I really, really appreciate you. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. I am so, so grateful. Anything else for pile number one? I'm hearing no on this, but I will share it with you now. Hope is the conduit for miracles. <clears throat> okay, that one, and then we can get your Kawaii tarot cards, and then we will be all set to begin your reading pile number one. Thank you for spending this time here with me in the pile prep. I do really much appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Not really much appreciate it. Nine of cups. Okay. Very nice. I'm already getting some good messages coming in for you. Ooh. Ooh. There was a high priestess behind that. If you know, you know. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I think we have enough now. So I will go ahead and I will 
organize these. I'm trying a slightly different method of handling this at the moment because I, I don't always want to do pick a pile readings. So this is a bit new for me on the channel. So, all right. All right, so for pile number one, again, if this was your card, I have it over here in the corner for you and we already pre-shuffled all of these. I did that just a moment ago. And we are going to go ahead and pull these out. For, for your Mystical Shaman Pocket Oracle cards, we have Earth and the Sweat Lodge. All right. I am already getting a message here and the Rainmaker. Okay, beautiful. So already one of the messages I'm getting is um, the universe wants you to, to, to try to go within or even go within nature or something along those lines in order to learn more about these, these things because... No matter no matter how much we control we have over our lives right there's always there's always some things this rainmaker card tells us there's always some things that are outside of our control that have really nothing to do with us like for example weather patterns like the rain happens because there's too much water in the atmosphere and then the temperature conditions are right um like that's a whole different process that's going on it's like the one of the earth's internal processes and to think that we're above a lot of these sorts of things can be um to think that we're above a lot of these sorts of things can be a sneaky thing to fall into almost because when we start to take these things personally in a negative way we are still assuming it is for us unfortunately so it's that's one of the messages that's coming through from the beginning with the rainmaker card here but definitely to go within to go within the earth like you're being called very gently back to almost a sense of like childlike not necessarily having to worry about anything so let's pull out your alistair crowley tarot cards here to begin with the Five of Swords with Defeat, the Three of Cups with Abundance, the Tower in Reverse, and the Three of Cups is in Reverse as well, and this, yeah, there was some kind of fight, I'm getting messages like deep, like this is almost, some of you might need to go back to my Mother Earth messages from Mother Nature, Mother Earth reading that was right before this one, because um, there's definitely some messages here about like some pain that you went through, um, and there was one pile that uh, that that would line up with this quite well, um, and if you happen upon it, then then so be it. That that would be a very guided uh, thing for you to maybe do. But here in this situation, I'm seeing that something happened where you felt a sense of defeat, whether you won or lost with the Five of Wands and the Five of Swords, whether you won or lost, even though we do have defeat. So I'm leaning towards people saying there was some kind of some kind of a defeat in their lives. Um, but regardless of outcome, it was something that was really uniquely painful, I am hearing, like, 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 like getting into fights with friends, like losing a bunch of friends that you really cared about. Um, and also a, a sense of like, also a sense of like, kind of seeing this thing happening ahead of time like like i'm almost getting a dejected sense of like oh i, I assumed that was going to happen and i believe that these cards were talking about messages about like the past here in in a sense to just get a feel for where we are going to be going because again this this internal work that needs to be done in the element of earth which I, I will read from the element of earth as well perhaps the rainmaker to to get that message across in a clearer way in the future of this reading but for now again with 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 all this this pain that that seems to have been experienced or even just loss even just failing over and over again unfortunately um you really need to come inside to this sweat lodge which is which is considered like almost like the womb of mother earth like return to the embrace of the earth even just sit down beside a tree and read a book that can be one of the nicest ways to just feel a sense of connection with the earth as well um uh, or just just getting some kind of connection in a way even I mean if you have to lay down on a bed then maybe lay down on a bed but just getting some kind of connection to the earth um, or going within yourself and knowing that you are safe even just in gravity's embrace um, that is something that's going to be relevant for you here because there's some processing that needs to be done here regarding this loss because it was already like it seems like whatever was happening it was really not good at all but you still managed to avoid a lot of the drama and and stress of it as a result of as a result of some of the things that you ended up excuse me for that bump as a result of the the things that you ended up thinking before going into the situation almost like you were almost prepped for how bad things were going to be which is really really effing painful i just have to say like if i could hold your hand and like give it a big squeeze i would pile number one because this i'm just getting a like a somber sense of acceptance of like stuff that's happening and let me tell you pile number one again these messages are about to kick your ass about that sorry 
when I'm in alignment with the peace oh excuse me the peace of the universe peace cannot be disrupted but when I'm in alignment when I'm in alignment with the love of the universe peace cannot be disrupted is coming out make sure these don't get too bumped around and then the more energy and intention I bring to my faith the more fearless and free I am and then we will move on to these cards here. So we have the Three of Cups upright, which previously, in fact, I will go ahead and I will move these over this way until we're ready to go through those cards again. But we have the Three of Cups again, but this time it is upright. And we had abundance as the, as the key word here. And there's a lot of abundance in this particular Three of Cups. It almost implies that the friendships that were lost are either going to be replaced by better ones or can be regained in the future. This is going to depend on your own interpretation of certain things, but you, you seem to have a deep knowing of, of this kind of a thing as well, whether it's just from a spiritual perspective, knowing that at some point you may meet these people like on the spiritual realm, or if you just kind of feel the sense of like, well, I, I can't really hold a lot of anger towards those people type of a thing. Because there is a lot of strife and difficulty and, and fighting um, going on, but the the universe, the messages here are coming through as these things are finally coming to a, a point of completion, and some of the wishes that you've had, whatever whatever it is that you've been like truly believing in, these little hearts in the trees that that it almost looks like she's writing down wishes as she's being pushed across. Um, these wishes are going to be answered. It's like you'll walk into your house and all of a sudden a bunch of these things will just be there at some point. Like uh, like the things that you've wished for, be this new friends or all sorts of other different things. Um, if it's a sense of like just abundance in terms of financial stability, I'm seeing that you're going to have a lot of maybe small gifts coming in. Like this is really reading as like a, like a tip jar kind of a situation. But you will be starting to see not only a sense of abundance, but also a, a larger sense of peace coming in, um, along with being a lot more fearless and free, because the message here, the big message here is that you have reached a stage of completion with this stuff. You're, you're actually being called in in order to reach a, a, a sense of completion about this stuff, because although you've gone through it, although you seem like you avoided the tower, you may have actually buried something down. And Mother Earth, uh, as well as a lot of different energies, we have a water energy on this card with the big whale, which is sometimes representative of, like, the universe as, like, a whale. Um, I, I don't know, remember where I'm seeing that, but that, that always makes me think of that. Maybe that's just my personal interpretation. I think it was from possibly Dishonored, but it's too late now. <laughs> it's too late now. I already see, like, that kind of a, that kind of a association, uh, like a great Leviathan type of a situation. But there is something that's coming up, some kind of positive like divine uh divine messenger that is coming up to try to bring you a sense of peace in this regard and it's going to be unearthing some things i'm hearing that might be a little bit painful for some of us like there will be there will be like a a a sense of like these wounds reopening because there is something new coming in to fill some of these spaces and as you can see here we even have some of the same Im imagery here like you not only will you be going for some of the best options again these are your fondest wishes they're, they aren't going to be like tiny little i mean they may be tiny little things but they're not going to be like the things that are really low on your list i guess i should say but there is sort of a process in this separation between i'm hearing the perspectives you may have held in the past versus the perspectives you hold now and feeling those things start to separate is going to put some tension on you i'm definitely getting uh, as, as some of your messages here um it's going to put some tension on you. It's going to feel strange as these things are kind of pulled apart. But as long as you remain, that's why you're being called within, within the sweat lodge. And we even have similar imagery here between these two with this with this big circular thing. I'm hearing that you will be within within the womb here, within within your own spirit, within your own self, or within within nature, and you will be able to be kept safe during whatever this transformation is. Again, if you're doing if you're really going through some painful trauma work. That womb could just as easily be talking to a therapist or talking to a friend and being wrapped in a nice blanket. Like sometimes, sometimes these things don't need to be as spiritual as we we give them, as we give them. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sometimes these things, this work that we need to do, doesn't need to be inherently spiritual in order to. Right, Juniper. She's scratching on the post. You have to forgive her. She's just really she's jamming out over there. Play me the song of your people. <laughs> These things don't need to be 
spiritual in the sense of like some kind of high level ritual they don't need to be spiritual in the sense of some kind of like you need to go and do a pilgrimage through the mountains type of a thing what i'm hearing is that it will affect you spiritually but however you go about doing this even if it's mundane i'm hearing it is going to be something that will up level you spiritually because even if we do the hard lessons just through life, through the mundane processes of doing things, our spirit still grows through these processes. We still learn new things through these processes. Sorry, I was just checking to see if I was um, still uh, properly focused here. But yeah, we still, we still learn through all of these processes and eventually you are coming to a stage of completion, possibly even by having more people in your life that, that can help heal that wound for you. Whatever this wound and competition was, whatever this wound was it was something that was very very painful and for that i am sorry but at the same time at the same time from someone who has been through some really serious pain in terms of turbulence and arguments like my parents were divorced and they continue to fight for 10 years on end uh if not even more than that I, and i i'm saying this from I, I that's why i didn't know if i wanted to talk about this necessarily so it is what it is um let me let me get let me get real with you pile number one scoop my booty in <sighs> I can get a sip of my water all right i took the coat off and everything we're we're really getting down to the, the conversation here so I'll take you into the sweat lodge here as an example, as a friend, just sitting by to listen. I know what it feels like to to see the world ripping apart in the future and to have people who are just standing by being like, oh no, I'm just gonna keep acting like this. No, I didn't even do anything wrong in the first place type of a behavior. I know what it's like to be told to do certain things um, that really aren't for your best interest by people that you really truly trusted uh, in a way that, that makes you feel absolutely betrayed i know what it's like to have been really seriously stabbed in the back and i know what it's like to have been without support to have been without any anyone there to to guide me to have been almost completely alone almost all the time i've been through those things and now i am on the other side of them standing in the sun just sitting in the sun actually right now um because the sun is filtering in through the window here and lighting up this this blue glass so beautifully and I'm standing in the sun because I recognize those tiny little things. And you seem to have done what I did in the past, which was to either bury whatever it is you were going through down so deep that no one could ever get to it to the point where now you have like a volcanic level activity going on underneath your emotional state, underneath your like base emotional state. Or you manage to avoid it just by being almost existential or just being like like uh, like nihilistic is the word I was looking for. Like you were like, well, you know, this kind of stuff happens. It's just the way life is. And then you just continued on with this perception on life. And the universe is about to kick you in the butt. I'm hearing the dog days are over by Florence and the machine. Happiness hit her like a bullet in the back. Like it's going to be that kind of a thing. Like you avoided this tower, but you're not going to be able to avoid the tower of how much better you're going to feel once you've actually done this work of processing whatever this is because i mean for me i had to go to therapy i had to talk with friends i had to take a lot of time to myself to just think about these things and how they made me feel to be angry about it to be like how the hell did i how the hell did i did i even survive that kind of moments um getting from feeling like you were at fault for everything that went wrong in your life to feeling like a system failed you to feeling like oh my god wait a second they didn't know what they were doing either there are so many different phases of this process and i'm not going to be able to tell you which phase of the process you're in although i can tell you you're quite close to completion um but then there are other phases after that where you get back into life, you start to manage things better, and then you start to remember all the good things about your life. You start to have more fun with friends again. You start to have more of the things that you want to see in your life. You see your wishes being granted. And I just want to tell you, like, through this process, you really are being, like, held so gently, like, by a mother's hands type of an energy. Um, maybe some of us have lost our mothers, and for that, I am very, very sorry. I send you all of my best. Um, but also some of us have only lost our mothers in the physical sense because we still have a lot of that energy around us um i would say and that brings me back to this point of being in alignment with the love of the universe 
if you want to feel a sense of like serenity now, peace now, it's always right there. It's it's in looking at the pretty gemstone when you feel called to look at the pretty gemstone. It's in so many different things. And for those of you, I will probably try to do it at the beginning of the pile, but this was the smoky quartz for your reading. I just put them all back in the in the area over there. It was just to help people with the way that they were thinking. But I'm seeing such deep cracks in this. But they also add this kind of like rainbow luminescence within it as well. Like every time the light hits those cracks, it's not like... <sighs> I'm hearing some of us might be... <sighs> What's the word? Ashamed of the way that we have acted in the past or the way that we have experienced life. I'm really getting a sense of like being ashamed of having experienced a certain life. And that, excuse me, I just had to take a sip of coffee. My tummy was grumbling. Excuse me. And that can be something that's very, very painful because you shouldn't have to feel shame at the entire way that you lived your life because there are reasons behind what everybody does. There are reasons behind what every single person does. And this society is not perfect. The world is not perfect. Nobody is perfect. And that includes you too. So as long as you aren't continuing behaviors that you know are absolutely wrong if you don't know that if you didn't know that these things were wrong if you didn't actually understand what was going on but you just had like a negative you're like no nobody really likes me anyway and then later on you figure out that you thought that nobody really liked you anyway because the people around you were trying to hurt you and keep you away from others with that type of a negative talk that built up in a negative self-talk you really you really start to believe that shit you know and I think you're going to start to unbelieve some of this stuff. I think you're going to start to unbelieve and unlearn some of this shame because shame doesn't teach anybody anything. It truly doesn't. All it does is, is so pain. And although I think that there are certain points in our lives where we would all feel like as reasonable people that someone would deserve to feel shame, I just don't think that's a necessity because I mean, look at, look at this. I don't know if you can actually see the, the little cracks in there, but they light up. They really do light up. They light up really, really beautifully, especially in the sunlight. And you can see like, it, it's like there's a whole world in there, even though this, this little guy is a little bit scarred. And I think this is one of my most beautiful little tumbled gemstones. I love that guy. I mean, I think all of them are some of the most beautiful ones, but that's how I am. And uh, uh, you too will find once you go through this period of this, this time in the sweat lodge, this time healing, you will eventually find that those scars are just as beautiful as, as any part of yourself that you have tried very hard to make beautiful or make handsome or make whatever the, the heck you prefer for your, your language referring to people looking good or looking right, you will start to feel better about certain things. You'll also gain new perspectives. Like for example, if this was your parents and you're older now, especially if you're past the age where your parents gave birth to you, do you think that you could, you, you would ever even consider making some of the decisions that they made? If they were, if they were hurtful to you, if you were in that position, would you ever have considered making that same decision? And then see how that makes you feel if the answer is no. See how that makes you feel. Like there's this tweet that I'm thinking of. It's like when I, when I was like three years old, my dad, my dad or someone was, was being, it was, a, it was a tweet. This isn't my particular thing, but I still empathize with it. Like when I was a kid and my dad was yelling at me, I shouldn't have cried. I should have just said, fuck you. Like... And I'm sorry for swearing, but like, like they're referencing like the dad being like 23 or something. Like if I met a 23 year old that talked to me the way my dad talked to me when I was a kid, I would 100% have already kicked him out and dragged him out by the ear. I'm, I'm like 28, 29 now. I would have dragged him out by the freaking ear. Like see how it makes you feel to consider what you would have done in that situation and then recognize that not only are you coming into a new era where you will actually be able to uphold these values and this integrity with the other people around you, where these, these aligned relationships will help you to not have to go through this breaking off process anymore, especially, especially making it calmer for you to have to have this breaking process off with yourself as well with old patterns and things like that. You will start to find all the things you want. The hummingbird right on top of the nine of cups here. Like the hummingbird travels the world it migrates to find the sweetest nectar and the nine of cups is a wish fulfillment card here like you will be the message here is you will be getting a, a lot more you will be getting a lot more than you think that you even deserve and completing a cycle in that as well with too much celebration and fanfare even if just within yourself just within your close group of friends because as we can see in the world card here 
all the little creatures playing instruments, all excited for for this this cycle of completion, all tied together with a neat little bow. So with that in mind, I think I'm going to read for you the best I can from, excuse me, a little burp, from this booklet here for you from Earth. Earth represents the gift of life. The symbol on this card refers to the body of the planet Earth, the human body, and nature herself. We're reminded by this symbol that all creatures are born of the Earth and human beings are the stewards of all life on this planet. It refers to what we make of it, our health, wealth, security, grounding, solidity, and stability. It reminds us that the world of form is a gift from spirit and needs to be treated with respect. I love that. I will allow for you to read. If I can, let me let me stand for this. It might make a bit of a noise here, but I'm gonna try to get this invitation and medicine for you if you would like to read them, because I'm gonna move on. For you to be able to pause there if you want to. And then I'm going to move on, move on, moved on. I already have moved on to the sweat lodge because this will have some similar information as well. And then I will once again share with you the invitation and the medicine at the end, but for the essence. The sweat lodge represents the womb of Mother Earth. Volcanic stones, just as we were saying with that volcanic activity under the surface with your emotions here. Volcanic stones are heated in a fire outside, then brought into the lodge and placed in a shallow hole in the center. Participants sit in complete darkness around the red hot stones to sweat away old habits and beliefs and heal disease. When you return humbly to the womb of the mother, you are offered second chances. And here's your invitation and medicine, if you would like to read them. Only read them if you feel called, it's not a necessity, but you are welcome to pause and read them. And then finally for the Rainmaker, I will read their essence as well as the last little messages for your reading here. The Rainmaker is the master of manifestation, who can call on the elements to serve the greater good. When the power to co-create is used with integrity, great beauty and benefit flow to all. When this power is used for personal gain only, everyone suffers. When the earth is parched, the Rainmaker calls the waters from the heavens, and all all that is dormant in the fields and in people's heart springs to life again. In people's hearts. And that's that's a lot of the message from the Rainmaker as well, but the Rainmaker, I believe the medicine was talking something about what I had already mentioned previously, so I'm not going to have to give you more than one of those. Only two shots today, kids. <laughs> so, um, again, we have, we have definitely gone over some painful stuff in this pile, um, and I will try to maybe put a trigger warning uh, down below, I think, for this one because of the fact that we're going to be talking about stuff on this level. Um, Actually, I probably will not. Please let me know in the description if if you think you would have needed a trigger warning. Or not in the description. The, in the comments, sorry. Please let me know in the comments if you think it would have deserved a trigger warning and I will add it. Um, but I don't necessarily think... I think that this message was probably delivered uh, gently enough to not necessarily cause any trouble here. So... And there's that car heading out. So I think I'm going to leave this reading here for the time being, pile number one. This message about about um, your light never being able to be lost, only forgotten, it really is calling into the fact that the things that you lost, you only think that you lost. Like, either you, either you moved on from something intentionally and it wasn't lost, it was let go, or you... If you truly feel like certain things were lost in a way, then then they can only truly be forgotten. Because there is there is some kind of a renewal, almost a rebirth that's happening here, and you are able to go within, sweat out those sweat sweat that out, whatever it is that that, that is like a thorn in your side almost for healing, um, that requires healing, and you will be able to regain this this light in your life. Whatever took the light out of your life is going to reveal itself to be something that never had the power to do so. It was only something that you you had forgotten in the patterns that you have learned as a result of whatever this this very painful defeat uh, defeat energy was. 
and these are these are your messages from from the universe from the divine spirit and the highest good of pile number one as i always try to say um i hope that this is helpful for you again thank you thank you so much for uh listening to this reading i very much appreciated having you here and if this did resonate with you you're more than welcome to leave a like or subscribe because i would love to see you again um and with that i will leave you with reading these cards one more time the more energy and intention I bring to my faith, be that faith in humanity, faith in life, faith in your life, faith in yourself, faith in others, the more fearless and free I am. And when I'm in alignment with the love of the universe, peace cannot be disrupted. That means you can even go through these periods of pain while still being within a sense of peace. All right, so we're gonna leave it there, as I said, and I wish you the best. Bye-bye. All right. Hello to my dear friends and my fellow souls in pile number two. If you chose this Ignite Your Talents to Ignite the World card, or if you chose this little agate bead, then this will be your reading for the day. You are messages that are coming in. So we're going to start by doing these. I will also probably do another reintroduction, so forgive me if you're here for both, because we're going to pick our cards first. So pile number one was pretty heavy and I'm hoping that I'm definitely getting a couple energies maybe between both. So if you're one of the few, then thank you for spending some more time with me. Otherwise, welcome. So pile number one, in fact, because I didn't do my statement, I always prefer to say that spirit and the universe and the highest good of pile number two. I might have said pile number one again. I keep doing that. That would be a double confirmation. Yeah. All right, so these have all fallen out like that. I'm gonna put them like that for now. Set this deck aside. Unless there's anything else that wants to come out. No, that was pretty succinct. And then I shall move on to The Universe Has Your Back. That was again the Alistair Crowley Tarot. Okay, when I accept the love of the, of the universe as my primary teacher, I will always be guided back to the light. I think I'm going to shuffle that back in because that was a big old gong noise and I think that was just for now. Okay, if you say so, universe. <laughs> Some people will have a surprise once we get to that. If you did actually uh, check out multiple piles, you may want to go back and check out pile number one if you want to. And I won't even look at that one, we'll find out. Okay. I've been doing it this way, so I think I will continue to. So for pile number two, what do we have for you? Okay, maybe I will do that the other way then. I think so too. Cards, I think so too. Because we've been telling a bit of a story with these. The messages have been coming in about like specific situations and stuff and this one you say okay okay I also have the four of swords on the back of the deck so one of the biggest messages is maybe to get some rest already coming out here with that but we'll see if that actually connects once we get through this put that one over there and then your mystical shaman pocket oracle that was the kawaii tarot what do we have, Spirit? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So now that we have set up your pile, We can go ahead and begin your reading. So for pile number two, again, if you chose this little agate bead, or if you chose Ignite Your Talents to Ignite the World, this is a reference to Luna Tarot, so I will be putting her channel in the description, and you're more than welcome to give her uh, a, a glimpse, give her uh, a couple views, maybe uh, maybe drop a comment for her as well. 
Um, she's incredible. She's much more successful than I am at the moment. So I'm not I'm not expecting to send like a whole army her way. But it would still be nice to give credit because that's her that's her whole phrase is she focuses on igniting your talents to ignite the world. So if you are so called, you're more than welcome to check that out. And then we're going to go ahead and get into your cards here. We have the crow and the tree of life, along with stand still. And I think before I move through this, I'm just going to take a second to think on this as we go. We're going to use this as the as the starting point before we, we read these cards. So I will put these off to the side for just a moment while we look at these. Because we do have the mail truck passing, so. All right, so for pile number two, what I'm getting from your reading right now, and let me turn my music down just a bit so I can focus on your message. What I'm getting from your reading right now, just at the moment, is that you have some kind of a big transformation coming up, like a very quick transformation, like like how a flame like burns down on a match before it finally lights the whole thing kind of a situation. Like it's, it's going to be happening quickly, but you can watch all the processes go by, especially if you come to a standstill in your life. The crow here is to to remind us that we are able to co-create with the truth with the universe and this is a universal law and also is reminding you to walk within your own integrity to walk within your own truth that truth has a space in the tree of life it has a space in the universe and you only need to stand still in order to notice how your talents how the things you do have been igniting the world around you in a positive way specifically so Let's see here. For your tarot cards, we have the Seven of Wands, the Star, the Four of Wands in Reverse, and the Tower in Reverse. We got the Tower in Reverse in the last reading as well, so there may be some people who are looking for a few more messages here, or just came to more than one pile. Sipping on my coffee really quick. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing again from these cards Hmm. You may already know this truth, and if there's something that you have been tr you have been trying to achieve, if there's something that you've been working really hard on, almost to the point of maybe not being able to rest. Hmm. There's something that you've been working very hard on, and you still have hope for it even though you haven't necessarily seen a return on it quite yet, you haven't been able to celebrate it quite yet. And um, it's something that, that hope has allowed you to overcome a, per a particular obstacle that may have been present in your path. In your path, um, Your hope has allowed you to overcome a particularly painful experience, whether this be something that you hoped your way through that was a particularly painful experience or your hope simply avoided the whole problem to begin with because we have the high priestess here on your other tarot cards we have the moon the moon and the star and we have the emperor you got all major arcana from this alistair crowley deck and what i will do is i will this also looks similar to the standstill card so i'll place that there place this one here and we will place this one here so that we can still see most of the imagery Yeah, this is a pile that that seems to be learning how to how to walk their own truth, how to walk within their own integrity. And you have kept hope alive. I, I'm hearing you have kept something alive in some of the darkest nights of your life. You kept something alive in the darkest nights of your life. Um, when when the moon was not around to light the sky, you had to light your own stars almost, and you did so in the best way that you possibly could. You have established your own boundaries. You have gotten in touch with your own intuition, and you've also learned a lot about yourself as a person, learning to... Hmm. I apologize, pile number two. I'm, I'm doing my best to try to process these, but there's such a complex energy to this pile. There's, it's almost like you're being asked to determine the difference between reality and fiction in this situation, especially with the moon almost looking like it still has the crow in front of it with the way that it's curved. We have such similar imagery between those two. Like, you're being asked to find the truth beyond all truths, basically, for yourself. Like, what is actually true for yourself? Um, 
And again, this could be relevant for pile number one as well as in like, that is the thing that you are meant to process at the moment, like is trying to find out the truth about yourself and really determine what that is. But I think that whatever it is that you end up figuring out about yourself or about the world around you, pile number two, you will find that not only, and again, we're, we're going to want to stand still to, to recognize this, right? So we're going to want to come to a bit of a halt and maybe meditate, maybe just consider your life for a little while, look out at a landscape, maybe watch a video uh, that is just like, you know, some nice lo-fi music that you can watch like a still image or something that's very calming. Excuse me, burp for confirmation. Um, but you are going to be able to come to a place of rest here. Excuse me again. And you will start to see more about yourself and about the world around you in a very, very meaningful way. Again, from pile number one, we have when I'm in alignment with the love of the, uni of, the, of the universe, excuse me, peace cannot be disrupted. Comedy comes in three, boys. <laughs> when I'm connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe is also another message here. So there is something that you have been connected to within yourself, especially with this, this, this joyful presence card and the star right here. You've been connected to that as much as you possibly can be through through some really, really difficult struggles that you've been on. And maybe you haven't taken the time to celebrate your smaller achievements, the fact that you even made it this far, the fact that you're still kicking, that you still have a sense of hope about the world. The fact, like, like is it true that, that your hope alone is useless? It, Crow is asking, like, is it is it true that, that even though you've had all this hope that's brought you through all these situations, is it true that it doesn't really do anything? Is it true that it's that it's not anything that, that actually mattered? Because this card is calling for you to recognize that your joyful presence, the presence that you have held just enjoying your life in certain ways, even if it's just when you get a coffee or a cup of tea, even if it's just a nice conversation, even if it's a walk through the woods, you have been attracting this support from the universe, from the divine, in, in so many different aspects of your life. And I think almost without even realizing it, some of us, if we know, we know. But there are there are definitely some of us who, who haven't quite gotten to that point. Like, they may be believing that that kind of a thing is just a, it's, it's just a myth, like, that doesn't really happen, you can't really hope for things to come into your life, etc, etc. And I truly do believe that it can be hard to believe in this kind of a thing, but I do believe that it is true, unfortunately. I find out the hard way. <laughs> and I won't explain what the hard way is, because I don't want you to have to go through it. Um, I'm sorry for the baby voice, but I can't, I don't know any other way to make that joke. Oh, I've been through so much pain. Anyways, <laughs> I, um, I, um, I truly, truly believe that there are forces at play that are beyond us in any, in any sense of understanding. Uh, and oh my gosh, look, the little moon. There we go, that moon that's representing Lunatero. Still the sliver of the moon. And then the big old moon right there as well. So many, like, huge completion phases and things like that in, in your reading here. And I just, I, I can already tell you right now, like your energy is something that I want to spend more time with. Like your energy already, just the way that you are. I just, I think you're so freaking cool, pile number two. Like this is, this is just getting a feel for your energy in general. I'm here to hype you up at this point because holy crap, like you're just a cool person to talk to. You're a cool person to be around. Um, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say besides that and the fact that you you have been your own hero for such a long time that I think you forgot you even were your own hero. I think you forgot you even were your own hero. Is what I'm is what I'm picking up. I'm picking up what the universe is putting down here cuz you avoided some serious situations and I've called out in this tower before that the tower itself although it is unstable seems like it has like so much more light imagery than most of the other things so maybe this wasn't like the worst situation in your life that you've overcome with grace and hope but you had hope for a situation that could have been a lot freaking worse and it turned out not a lot freaking worse because of the hope that you had like as we as I, i've just put it back but i'm gonna pick it up again these little guys are are they're bouncing all the little balls around everywhere they're pretty good at, at handling their their freaking task whatever it is they're just playing while they're falling through the air in the storm and that 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 reminds me of of the energy of this pile is just like uh like good friend in an apocalyptic scenario type of a thing. Like I would totally bunk up with you if, if, if the world ended, but it's not going to end. It's not going to end yet, my dears. 
not anytime soon. So staying connected with that hope that, that has carried you through so many different situations, that is almost like an energy that you are giving to the tree of life. And that's why you are being rewarded either now or in the future. That's why you are being rewarded for these things. That's why you are seeing all the benefits that you are seeing. Um, and if you haven't seen them yet, the universe is telling you, again, you got to get real about, about who you are as a person before this is going to end up connecting itself to you. And it may take, you know, give the universe a minute or two to get things going, because it's not like it's going to be mind controlling people into doing what you want. It's just going to be trying to connect things through synchronicities and stuff like that, trying to get your messages to other people, trying to get um, your your desires towards other people that can maybe bring them into you. Um, I don't know why I specifically heard messages that might be for someone in particular, like maybe you're someone who's trying to, like I am trying to become more successful on YouTube or on TikTok or something along those lines. Maybe you're someone who, uh, who's making some kind of art. I'm definitely getting like a music vibe to this pile. So yeah, continue to connect with this joyful presence, whatever it is in your life, whatever, whatever, whatever it is about life that brings you this joy that allows for you to be in this presence. That's, I think, where you will find your truth. Because there have been some lies about yourself, pile number two, that you've been telling yourself, and it's not the positive ones. It's some of the negative ones. And I hate to say that, because I also happen to pick a few piles, and this might be one of my piles, and I don't want to accept it either. I don't want to accept that maybe the positive things are going to be the things that come true. That, that sounds scary. So let's do it together. On the count of three, we're both going to just accept that there can be good things coming into our lives, all right? One, two, whoo, and three. All right, fine, fine. You know what? Fine, 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 fine. Yeah, okay. So the negative things that I was thinking about, the, the negative things that I was thinking about actually are not necessarily true about me then, is what I'm getting from this then is what I'm thinking in the back of my head. I'm trying to, I'm trying to basically guide you through the process in a, in a, like a mental, uh, a mental conversation sort of a way. But essentially what these cards are really asking for you, especially with the crow, and I'm going to jump out of like talking about myself now, because I don't, I don't like to read for myself in the moment. I would completely lose my, my intuition. So, uh, that's the only one that I'll share. I, I'll leave it up to you to decide what the other pile might be, because I won't share it again. Um, but between the crow and the moon here, there's something that you have either been led to believe. There's like believing in illusions to a degree. And there's something about these illusions that is to be believed. And there's something about these illusions that is not to be believed. We have so much imagery on this card here that represents even like the concept of, of, of death, of moving into a new world, of rebirth as well. Imagery of gods. and kings there's there's something that is your birthright pile number two that you have not accepted and it is going to it is going to be okay i guess but you won't be able to celebrate the things that you've wanted to celebrate the things that you've been fighting for aren't going to come to you until you are ready to accept them and that's going to mean stepping up truly into your power and being like all right you know what I am a really cool person. Whatever it is that stepping up into your power means to you and continue to step into that power, just don't step into everybody into everybody else's power is all I would ask of you. Like, don't hurt anybody with this. But if it's your joyful presence, if it's being in alignment with love of the universe and feeling a sense of peace, then by all freaking means, go. Go for it. Go for it is what I'm hearing. And with that... Pile number two, I think I'm going to leave your reading here because you clearly already have a good feel for a lot of the stuff that's going on. In fact, this is almost coming in as a, a bit of a confirmation, save for the message about standing still and getting to know. And that is how you will know the difference because you will begin to get in, more in touch with your intuition. We have like a sun-ish card and a moon card here. We have we have four, two, 18. We also had 13 as a good, a good, a good power number there. And I'll put this over here near the star. Yeah, there's, again, pile number two, there's something about you that you just need to stand still to recognize and to fully, to fully, fully recognize. And I'm hearing it's going to bring some of you to tears. It's going to bring some of you to tears to realize that you have been this hard on yourself when there was no need to be. You've always had hope maybe for being a better person, for being like a better person to be around, a better, a better lover, a better friend, a better kid. And you're going to find that you were already doing so freaking much 
to the point where you are going to start to figure out how to bring your own energy in and, and adjust. You're going to be like, all right, we need to prune some of this stuff because I ain't dealing with this anymore. Um, or on, on the inverse side, if you've just been lucky enough to avoid a lot of that, you will just immediately catch fire and you will be, you will be on this, on this, on this wavelength that other people are going to be able to intuitively pick up on. And it's going to change the way that they interact with you. It is going to change the way that they interact with you. Again, they're going to, they're going to be just like, there's just going to be a sense of awe about other people being around you with 606 on the, on the clock here. There's going to be like an awe Maybe that's an angel number for somebody to look up, but there's going to be like some kind of an awe around you um, from other people. And I'm very, very impressed by this pile. Don't get me wrong. Like once you get a handle on whatever this ability is that you have to hope yourself through certain situations or to, to, to stay focused on the positives to the point where you're able to get through it, not only without hurting anybody, but without without yourself getting hurt once you get in, in touch with this you're gonna be like a freaking superhero pretty much you're gonna you're gonna really kick some spiritual butt when it comes to getting what you want and maybe i shouldn't even say kicking uh kicking some spiritual butt i'm gonna say you're gonna you're gonna ignite your talents to ignite the world pile number two and I, i'm not gonna say that much more than that because uh again that's that's luna's uh catchphrase there so you may want to check her out again see if there's something there for you but other than that, pile number two, I, I don't know what to tell you except for the fact that you, eventually, once you once you can see through. Imagine all of these little. All of these little things as almost like confetti, that's leading you. Once you've gone down this path just a little bit further through this knowledge of yourself and and having it be true knowledge of yourself, not just knowledge that you've lied to yourself about. You will get to basically be pretty freaking cozy and happy celebrating the things that you have wanted to celebrate. And I, I, I wish you all the best in that. I truly, truly do. You're going to have so much fun. Your cup will be overfloweth. And you will have good people, good music, comfort around you. Maybe people getting a little bit tipsy at some of these situations. So do be careful about that. Don't, don't overindulge or anything like that. Um is a message coming in with all this with all this abundance that you will start to see very soon very soon so getting in touch with yourself keeping your boundaries and soon you will have the things that you want to celebrate and with that train i'm gonna leave you here pile number two thank you so much for being with me if this message resonated you're more than welcome to subscribe or leave a like it means a lot to me comments are also welcome because i do accept suggestions for the next videos and bye bye for now Right, hello to my dear friends and fellow souls in pile number three. Not to sound uh, sad about that, I just it just came out weirdly. If you chose the soda light or the every storm feeds beauty somewhere card, I love this little guy. He's my buddy. Put him over there again. I've put all the gemstones back after everything. This will be your pile preparation. So I will start out here with the Alistair Crowley Tarot. I didn't like this one. Hmm. Spirit. I just to pile number three. Back, I'm gonna put that back for now. What just do you have to give to pile number three? Anything else? All right. And then from the universe has your back deck. Feeling some people have some, some specifics about these. So we'll take these two. Anything else? That one for sure. There's two here. I guess we'll do four. You lucky ducks in pile number three getting four cards from the universe. You lucky ducks. Here in the John Mulaney quack quack joke. I think this came out upside down, so I might keep that like that. Is that
Are we going with three and three on that? Nope. Okay. And that was the Kawaii Tarot. Okay. Your Every Storm Feeds Beauty Somewhere card. And these are the Mystical Shaman Pocket Oracle cards. shuffle that because this one feels it just feels like it needs a better shuffle here okay. Ooh, that's I think that's too many cards here but for confirmation well there's two for confirmation or if anyone would like to look at these we have the spiral leaving certain things behind definitely and moving on to bringing new things with us like leaving behind old patterns we no longer wish to hold on to Recognizing our tools, recognizing that we're going to be nourished. Yeah, we have some we have some incredible tools already in this pile is one of the mini messages coming through right now. <clears throat> incredible tools coming in already. Uh, the Rainmaker as well here. But I'm not going to keep these at the moment because these are the two that felt like that. If, you, if you'd like to... Um, learn more about those. I believe some of them have already come up in some of my pre previous readings, or if you'd like one in specific, I'm more than happy to write it down for you if you leave a comment and let me know which one you wanted to learn more about. Or you can ask about all of them and I'll write them all down for you. I don't care. I'll do it for you, pile number three. Okay. And these will be our cards. I think one more, actually. Hold on. I was hearing one more. All right. Okay. So let's get these settled in so that the people who didn't want to hang out for the pile, pile prep, the pile prep, where we do all our funny, our funnies, so that they can uh, see everything laid out. Let me make sure the dish is right. Yes, I believe it is right. Okay. Already getting more of a silly energy with pile number three. I'm happy to be with you here. Thank you for spending some time with me. Burp, excuse me. Alrighty. Okay, so for pile number three, last but not least, if you chose this soda light crystal, as you've already seen if you were in pile prep or in the beginning, obviously, put him back over here. Or this Every Storm Feeds Beauty Somewhere card. This is about this is about how even though we can go through storms and rains in our life figuratively speaking if we use those words to describe certain periods of our life are they not also feeding something are they not also are they not also watering our lives in a way <clears throat> and for your oracle cards we have the holy mountain magic the wild woman and lightning and these pile number three i am already already and always getting a message from i'm hearing <laughs> because this is a this is about talking with spirit reaching up towards this holy mountain and going on the journey up towards it and learning to commune with spirit learning to commune with the universe around you um this can be something that can be very terrifying so i'm being told you have to make sure that you do this as as safely and as gently as you need to and make sure you treat yourself with care because it can be stressful on the body like i'm thinking of like biblical passages where like people end up like just literally going blind or deaf because they hear the voice of god like that kind of stuff that kind of stuff can happen for a number of different reasons and i've had seizures in regards to this kind of stuff as well which is why i talk about it so it can be a very painful process but you specifically pond number three are being invited to dance your way up this mountain to dance your way through the storm not taking a walk not taking a pilgrimage not doing things the hard way but to dance through it and when you get tired of dancing to just go lay down to go have some food to treat it like it's a party like it's a like it's a party of travelers that are all moving up and it's literally just they're just celebrating from one path to the next and just celebrating their way up food uh all the water you need to drink all of the time you need to maybe take a shower to rest all of these things are things that you will want to keep in mind because you're going to want to treat yourself as if you're taking care of a child because that's how the universe, that's how spirit would like to communicate with you today is, is treating you as if you were a child again and trying to have you go on this journey of like, like 
I'm hearing. Let me take you into the garden, into the garden. I'll be there, painting the flowers, give them color. I'll be there. I'm hearing that as like the the song that's coming from this mountain trying to like lead you on. That's what's trying to pull you forward is that voice. And this is, I'll put that song in the description. That's Aurora's The Secret Garden. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut off on that. But um, that's what I'm hearing from this is, is just like a sense of like, uh, let me take you into the garden. I'm in there painting the flowers, giving them colors, and I'll be there waiting for you once you get there. So take your time on this journey to this holy mountain. Because what we're seeing in your tarot cards here, we have the Knight of Coins in reverse, the Nine of Wands, and I had I had, had a different interpretation of this card originally, but now I have a slightly different one. The Nine of Cups and the Two of Coins. So yeah, what we're seeing here is very similar to this kind of an energy, but it's in relation to something that you haven't seen come into your life yet. Or maybe two things that you've been juggling that you haven't really seen, maybe not come into your life, but you haven't seen results from. Like there's something that you, you've been waiting on for such a long time and it feels like it's been forever. And you have been wishing for it for such a long time. You've been wishing for it for forever. Or alternatively, you've been stuck getting everything that you haven't wished for. And you've been just trying to juggle everything between all that. Which is kind of the same thing, isn't it? Like, what you get is what you get, and sometimes what you get is nothing, and you, maybe you haven't wished for nothing. It's, it's, all, it's all the same message at the end of the day. However it is that it applies to your life, um, feel free to take liberties a little bit with, with some of the scenarios that I give, because that's going to be relevant here. But let's pull out your other tarot cards and get a bit more of a message here, because honestly what I'm seeing here is that you're being invited on this journey to notice what it is that this this situation of lack provides for you in this life in a way like what do you have now that you may miss in the future if these things did actually come through recognize that you have been in this state of like almost defending your dreams for such a long time that this break towards this this sonorous song from the heavens this break of dance and and just like a, a cheerful non-painful pilgrimage is something that is going to bring you so much joy it's going to like just remove all these burdens from your shoulders instantly like this poor little guy's been holding onto this candy so long it looks almost like he has a bandage on his head and all these little bunnies are around like why are you doing that for so long like why are you up there i don't know if you should be up there that looks dangerous but he's thinking of all of his dreams and all the things that he wants to accomplish and you've also been working very hard that would be you in this scenario and you've also been working very hard trying to get these things done and almost balancing there's like juggling going on in more ways than one here and balancing along with the crazy waves in the background so the winds are definitely higher there too there's a lot <clears throat> especially with the eight of swords here it's like there's almost been a sense of being trapped but there will be a point where you can work on this and actually feel a sense of gain you just need to do a little bit. It's not, actually I'm hearing with this eight of discs in reverse, it's almost like you have completed. You have actually completed the work of the eight of discs to go into the nine of discs. The last thing that you need to do on this journey is much like this is upside down, take that path up the mountain. And you guys got four freaking cards. Four cards from the universe for messages. So we are going to read through those together here. Um, the key to prayer is to forget what I think I need. I'm gonna put that over here near the holy mountain. Yeah, forget what you think you need to do in order to pray. Like, like if you decide to dedicate just being excited about music to the concept of prayer and just listen to some of your favorite playlists and and just see how it makes you feel while you while you work about the house or even just sing, even if you're not the best singer. Like, uh, I do sing uh, for a living, and I'll actually put my channel in the description as well if people are curious about uh, the singing stuff. But. Um, I specifically love to just like listen to music and get all excited about it, about that, but doing it as a prayer means that that energy and the excitement that you feel is being offered in thanks back to the thing that made all of it possible, which is the universe, which is spirit. And then that energy flows where your intention goes towards your dreams because your intention is towards those dreams. So when you think you've surrendered, when you think you've gotten off of that, that 
little holding on situation when you finally think that you've you've gotten uh, better at letting go at, at, at surrendering to all the stuff that happens when you finally think that you've you've taken care of yourself more that's when the universe is going to come out with another cup of hot chocolate for you and to remind you to get some rest and to enjoy yourself in this feast of life or to remind you not to overindulge um to just come with you with like a, a glass of lemon water or something to help cool cool you off if you've been if you've been indulging too much for example because your happiness is a direct reflection of your level of faith in the universe. So by this point, when you've already forgotten what you needed to do in order to pray, and you start to feel the difference that this type of prayer, whatever it is you decide to do, makes on your life, when you start to, to notice these differences and all the changes that can occur, you are going to start to recognize that not only does this energy flow towards you surrendering even more because it feels just genuinely nice to surrender to something that's willing to co-create with you to be like all right i'm not gonna fight you anymore then we can just work together and then also towards your happiness because that faith is just going to continue it's you really have cards about like faith into happiness and then feeling happier and then feeling more faith to the point where you reach this sense of true connection and wonder with spirit where you become like the grandchild of of the universe in a way where you become like like we are all children of god we are all children of the universe but you become you become someone who is like special and gifted in a way because of the fact that you are simply listening to someone that you see more like a grandparent someone that you see more like a more like a, a figure of like maternal paternal or combination of love and it's really going to influence your life in a really meaningful way here the last thing you need to do is just go on this pilgrimage and and give thanks to spirit and and maybe lay down your intentions there while you're there like maybe maybe this pilgrimage is one where you start to you start to go through your wishes and in, in a process of like writing things down that you would like to see like an on a little page for manifestation drawing things that, that you want to manifest in your life and then seeing how those things change over time because my gosh this is a beautiful reading you are so so blessed pile number three whether you know it or not you are insanely blessed and you are so loved by the universe you're being guided you're being very very guided you're being you're being brought on a, on a journey of of dance and revival and renewing and of coming to learn more about spirit and yes some of those days will be through the rain you will have some of those days where yeah it's gonna rain at the function a couple times but that just means you're gonna see new flowers blooming the next day or even during the time where you're dancing maybe the rain will allow for it to finally maybe the perfect raindrop falls right onto a, a flower bud and it just like bursts open in front of your eyes and without that rain you wouldn't have been able to see that because there would have been nothing to burst it open so just some just some thoughts and again this lightning card says that this enlightenment can be terrifying it can hurt you so if you feel like you need to take a step back you can always ask for the universe to turn down the synchronicities, be like, all right, I need to go back to being normal. I need to go back to being grounded and I want to just live my life like physically again. You can always turn that off for a little while if you if you don't want to be super connected to it. But I, I assure you this is a lot like a muscle and you eventually get better at better, better and better at dealing with these sorts of uh, interactions with spirit to the point where eventually you can fly wing to wing with spirit as the eagle card says in uh this particular oracle deck you can you can fly wing to wing with great spirit and uh, in regards to your maybe maybe it, it almost feels like your wishes aren't even really big enough and that might have been why some of these things weren't coming through because you didn't realize how much you were really worth um but yes your your little things that you want to make yourself happy which i believe we should all be able to have but the the, the things that you want to make yourself happy the things that you want to make yourself feel more in tune with the things that you do like whether that's getting some coffee on your way to work or all sorts of other little treats that we'd like to have throughout the day um to get us through and keep us productive whether that be tools whether that be especially because we mentioned earlier maybe some of you do need you're looking to get some more money to upgrade your equipment in some way and that's that's uh that's an issue right now and you're really you're really holding on as best as you can with what you have but spirit is saying oddly enough if you want to upgrade your tools to continue just wish this in a prayer go through this journey of prayer through dance through music through even through like watching a video if you want to uh the jungle book is a huge recommendation and if you were in my other reading before i did remember what hmc is um if you if you weren't there for for the the previous reading that i put out um 
right before this with the messages from Mother Earth, there was a channel messages where I put HMC. It was Howl's Moving Freaking Castle. So that's already in the description, but I just had to say it aloud at some point. So maybe Howl's Moving Castle is a good one for some of you to watch. Or maybe a Studio Ghibli film in general would be a good thing for you to try to look at because it, uh, especially My Neighbor to Totoro is a great one. That can make you feel, that can make you feel like so childlike again. And it can, it can bring you back to the state that you're being asked to be in. So whatever it is you like to watch, be this Disney movies, be this more complex stuff, um, just find something to entertain you. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. Whatever, whenever this reading comes to you, enjoy this process. Because if you decide to go through it with the with the mindset of prayer, if you decide to make every action, as long as it's an intended and planned out action to a degree, like like I know I'm not gonna ask for my like bathroom breaks to be a prayer necessarily, right? But if it comes to like, okay, when I clean my house today, I'm going to be doing it as a prayer, um, and I'm gonna have music in the background or a podcast in the background that makes me laugh. And that laughter, I want that laughter to be a prayer. That's a way to pray. That's a damn good way to pray. And I hope that this message finds you well, pile number three. This is, I think, all I can give for you today. Um, I am, I am, I am about to get started on this myself right now, actually. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some music on and I'm just gonna enjoy my process. I'm probably gonna do a little bit of cleaning in the house because I'm starting to feel that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pray too. So I will see you on that journey, pile number three. If I see you out there, I am so happy to see you. Hello, and I look forward to, to dancing up this mountain with you. Let's go. Let's dance through the storms. Let's see what happens. See how many flowers we see bloom. And with that, pile number three, I will leave you there after reading these cards to you one more time. The key to prayer is to forget what I think I need. My happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. When I think I've surrendered, I surrender more and energy flows where my intention goes. Thank you so much for being here in this reading with me, pile number three. It has been a joy to read for you. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, please feel free to subscribe or leave a like. It always helps the channel and I will I would love to see you again and uh, talk more about this journey that we're going on together. Um, but if not, I still understand and I hope this reading was able to help you. Thank you so much for your time and goodbye for now.